where have you been for the last 40 years? <laughs> the, the, the change that already is happening is monumental. It's monumental for a percentage of particularly the female population, but not all. And if we're going to apply radical generosity, I implore all of you women here to take a look at your sisters in the outside world that are not necessarily in tune and make them a part of your everyday project. They just don't understand. Thank you so much, Vicki. Um, I'll make it quick. How do women apply? So on August 10th, our application is open for this year. We're in Canada, the US, New Zealand, and the Netherlands this year. So you can apply on our website, sheeo.world. That's another thing that we've radically changed. It's only 12 questions, no pitch decks, no attachments, no jargon. First question, why you, why now, 100 words. So it's a totally different application process. The term generosity, you mentioned, you know, you changed a lot of your, the definitions for very traditional terms. Um, so I asked for me, I mean, for me personally, I struggle a bit with the word generosity and even struggled when I saw it in the question. Um, what do you say to people that sort of, um, for them to embrace that term and embrace being that? Um, because generosity, I think, means a lot of things to a lot of people, particularly in business and creatives. Um, just how do you embrace just being really generous and the term generosity? Yeah, I mean, everything's a practice, right? So the fact that it, does, it feels uncomfortable, I would say awesome. That's good. Right, it's just a message for you uh, around what it means. I mean, my mother, when I was coming up with this idea, she's like, why do you have to call it radical? It's just generosity. Uh, and I said, yeah, but when you put radical in front of it, people think a little differently. They, you know, generosity is a bit too like anemic, uh, but radical generosity. For me, there's this, there's this thing around generosity and gratitude uh, that I've learned since I started this. So giving and receiving, giving and receiving. This is. This is a full breath. Just giving all the time, you're always out of breath if you don't receive. So you have to give and receive. And one of the things that we've noticed, I personally have been working so hard on this. I'm great at giving to everyone else, but receiving, I'm like, no, I'm good. Got it covered. It's okay. But as soon as I do that, I, stop, I rob you of a chance to give to me. And so this giving and receiving, we're all out there practicing gratitude. We have to practice generosity too because it's the other half of this whole Hi, thank you. What does success look like for the businesses? Success? What success. does it look like? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the, the best part of this is when I first started this, I go, imagine if, dot, dot, dot. Uh, and now we're in year three, and so I have lots of success stories. Every business is growing between uh, 15 and 500%. Uh, it's really incredible. So there's, there's financial success uh, for the businesses, but there's so much more, too. There building their confidence. So one of the things that's amazing as a business in this network, when you get selected, you are validated by 500 women. For a lot of women, that's a game changer. 500 women love what you're doing and want to help you. That's a really big deal. And then when you get in this network and your first ask is usually kind of, eh, wouldn't it be great if you could retweet my marketing? I'm like, really? We're like 500 of us, like Ferraris, ask us something. Um, learning how to ask is also a muscle, right? And so each month, you can see as people start to ask and realize, I really do have 500 people who want to help me. What could you possibly ask that gets you to the next level? It gets bolder and bolder. So I'm not a huge fan of the word empowering. I, th I think of the word emboldening. What would happen if we emboldened each other to get to that next level? And so those are some of the things that are success. There's financial success. There's impact of the businesses on the world. And then there's also the personal impact on the entrepreneurs and also on the women activators, the women who are contributing their capital, first of all, are like, oh my God, we, I, picked the, I voted for that company. She's doing really well. Oh my gosh, I love talking about this at parties. I love sharing the impact that I'm having. And they get to vicariously sort of live through this experience. And then we're starting to realize it's very early still, but I think we have a pretty high number of women who are starting to quit their jobs. <laughs> uh, they're like, hmm, maybe I should do this too. So there's, there's a whole transitional thing that starts to happen as you start to dream. Okay, I saw you from the back, thank you. I really enjoyed your presentation today. So I'm trying to think about this whole community thing. Your community, maybe you found 500 women that will be there to support, but our community, 
maybe I can find, I can't even find the economics to, to do things. And our community is different, wondering maybe people will favor you in a different way than what people, people will be favored in a different way than what um, yours, your community is doing. So I've experienced that I've tried to um, apply for things and under other programs and they have not gone well because they haven't been supported. I'm not privileged because I'm not in the privileged community as a deaf woman. So I wonder if I can apply to the community that's underprivileged, how do you deal with that, with communities that are underprivileged? So what we do uh, that I think is uh, a, a little bit different as well is we are trusting the intuition of 500 women over five experts in a room. Like if you do normal due diligence on how you pick companies, your head explodes in our network because you're like, what? You can't do it that way. What does that woman over there who's 92 who gave money know about picking market winners? That's not what we're doing here. The first question is, would you buy or recommend this product or service? Do you think this is something that will have a positive impact on humanity and will change the world? These are the questions we're asking to select these companies. I, I don't necessarily think that privilege enters into that piece. We are looking for game-changing, innovative ideas that benefit humanity. I don't see that as having, uh, anyway, yeah, thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>